House of Wax from 1953 starred Vincent Price. It was a murder mystery movie themed, of course, around an eerie wax museum. And, you know, anything with Vincent Price involving creepy stuff, especially a wax museum, you know it's going to be good. Now, this film was actually a remake of Mystery of the Wax Museum from 1933 that starred Lionel Atwell. So I had recently reviewed this film, and since it's still fresh in my brain, I wanted to check this one out that came out 20 years later in 1953, and I was not disappointed. This film is great. It opens up on a rainy night in New York City at a mysterious wax museum. Now, Professor Jared is the character, played by Vincent Price. He's hard at work on his sculpture. Now, his business partner, Matthew Burke, is played by actor Roy Roberts. He plays kind of his scheming business partner. He doesn't really get into the art of wax museums, I guess. He's really in it for the money, and he wants out of this business. Well, Jared is actually a really good sport about it. He's not a jerk, and he really seems to be accommodating. And he tells this Burke guy that there's some investors that are coming over later, and they might give him an option to buy him out. And Burke initially seems okay with this idea. So these investors show up, they take a brief tour, and they leave, but they can't make a decision or any sort of commitment yet until they can return in a few months. Well, this Burke guy, he's impatient, and after they leave, he shares his nutty idea of setting the place on fire for insurance money. Now, if you've seen Mystery of the Wax Museum, a lot of the themes are identical. They really did a great job of basically remaking this film while keeping it very faithful to the original story. But there are also some differences as well. I really respected how they did this. Well, the Burke's crazy scheme is to start setting things on fire. And of course, Jared's not having any of it, but too late. Burke sets Mary Antoinette on fire, which leads to a fight. More things set on fire, lots of punching. All these fires start spreading, and eventually Burke makes it out, leaving Jared presumed dead. The fire department arrives, and it's noteworthy. They're like on horse and wagon, which was cool. I think this was intended to be set around you know, the turn of the century, 1900 or something. I really like the atmosphere and the timing of this particular film. Well, later after the fire, we cut to this fancy dance going on and here's Burke just kind of chilling out and having a beer and talking about, you know, how noble it was that his old friend died in the fire. I mean, he's really a jerk. But what floors me about this scene is that he is talking here to this sweet young woman who is played by actress Carolyn Jones, who was Morticia Adams of the Adams Family. But what's so funny, it just blows my mind, is here she is all bubbly with golden curls and she's giggling and, oh my goodness, it's like the polar opposite of Morticia Adams. <laughs> I love it, it's great. Well, cut to Burke later at his office and he's going through a safe and watch out, suddenly there's this horribly disfigured creepy guy sneaking up on him one thing about mystery at the wax museum that you know we really didn't see revenge on an epic scale and well right from the beginning yeah there's some revenge taking place now we don't know who the creepy disfigured guy is but well we can kind of guess dear viewer yeah well he gets his payback he strangles burke and then fakes his hanging man yeah, whoo, some creepy stuff right off the bat. Well, cut to a boarding house where the character Kathy lives with the character Sue Allen, who's played by Phyllis Kirk. And she's helping Kathy get dressed for to go out on the town, putting on this tight corset thing. And Kathy doesn't seem all alarmed that Burke is dead. I mean, Kathy's just all giggly and ready to find a new sugar daddy. Uh, but her friend Sue seems genuinely concerned about her friend here. And you know, they have a nice little friendship. You know, I think I've seen Phyllis Kirk in an old episode of Twilight Zone. She looks familiar, uh, kind of resembles actress Loretta Young. Maybe it's just me. But I think she was in the Twilight Zone episode where it was the guy who was a writer and he could write people out of existence. So 
<laughs> uh, it's funny how you can see the uh, overlap of some of these actors. But anyhow, these two were friends. And even if Kathy is a little daffy, her friend, you know, Sue is concerned about her. So she leaves for her date and Sue heads off for a job interview. So later that night, when Sue gets home, she still doesn't have a job. The people that run this boarding home are ready to kick her out. But she goes upstairs to look for Kathy, finds her in a room, but she's dead. And there in the room is the disfigured character, all mysterious, who chases after her. Sue has to climb out a window and runs through the foggy city scene. And, you know, it's actually, it looks like a set. I know, but it looks good. I like it. And just the way that this disfigured character is dressed, he's kind of got this Jack the Ripper vibe to him as he's on the run chasing after her. She finally hides out and gets away. And soon detectives show up and they investigate the murder. They're led by detective Tom Brennan, who's played by Frank Lovejoy. He's actually been in a few films I've reviewed recently. Uh, he was the detective in Bogart's In a Lonely Place. You know, Frank Lovejoy just has that look to him. He just looks like a detective, but he's a great actor. He was in The Hitchhiker as well. So cut over to the morgue. The new body has arrived. And, you know, I like how just like the original film, we have the same scene with the two chatty morgue guys who are basically doing their same exact routine as, you know, <laughs> the mystery at the wax museum, including the embalmed body sitting up suddenly. Well, the two of them leave, and of course, there's our mysterious monster who's been hiding, pretending to be a cadaver, and he gets up and sneaks off with Kathy's body, lowering her out a window to his accomplices. Well, later, the character Sidney Wallace returns. It's played by Paul Cavanaugh. He was one of the early business investors in the film. So he shows up at the studio in the city and is greeted by Igor, who is played by a young Charles Bronson. And to be honest, I can't remember if it was Igor or Igor, like the last film, but whatever. We're going to let this one go. He, uh, Charles Bronson, you know, he's one of his early roles here. He plays this, the deaf mute character. And he leads Wallace to meet with Professor Jared. And, you know, it's Vincent Price, but he looks fine, a little older, you know, but he's in a wheelchair now following the fire. Also working for him is Nedrick Young playing Leon, his bearded assistant, because you know my rule for these old films. Beards generally mean there's something suspicious or crazy about the person. Anyhow, Jared says he's going to go darker with some of his themes of the wax museum, but Wallace doesn't think that's a good idea. You know, he wants more of that wholesome Marie Antoinette style sculpture stuff. But in any case, Jared gives Wallace a tour of the wax museum and even takes him into the lab with these big bubbling vats of wax that to me looked a great deal like bubbling Pepto-Bismol, but whatever, we'll let that one go. And we finally get to the grand opening of the museum and it looks great. You know, I think this one was really impressive looking how they put it together. And it was really interesting to me to see the actor Reggie Rimel as this paddle ball professional outside announcing the opening talking to everybody who's gathered and i guess they put him in mainly for the 3d effect of a paddle ball flying in your face you know it's kind of different but you know paddle ball well whatever uh, professor jared gives a tour and points out some of the exhibits throughout the museum they even include more creepier things like a guy and a guillotine and even a guy in an electric chair you know, good, wholesome stuff. Well, Sue shows up, accompanied by young sculptor Scott, who's played by Paul Picherny. She looks around and notices something eerie about the Joan of Arc figure. It looks oddly familiar, very much like her deceased friend, Kathy. Well, Jared notices this, rolls over, and explains that he used her specific likeness for Joan of Arc. Sue seems okay with this. It's pretty weird, if you ask me. But it does get worse as Jared is looking at Sue and thinking that she looks a great deal like his lost wax sculpture of Marie Antoinette. Uh-oh. Well, later Sue is settling down for the night and then lo and behold, the monster guy shows up. He's been creeping around outside her window. He sneaks in her room. She sees him, screams, and he takes off running. 
The next day, Scott takes Sue out for dinner. And it's kind of like a dinner theater with dancing girls. And again, I guess they did this primarily for the 3D effect, you know. There's the dancing girls kicking at the camera as part of their dancing act. Sue, of course, seems disinterested. She's worried that the statue of Joan of Arc at that wax museum could actually somehow be her friend. Well, Scott tells her no, but he agrees they'll go ahead and talk to the detectives about it just in case. Well... Back at the museum, Sue decides to take a closer look at that Joan of Arc, checking out the skin and so on. And at this point, Professor Jared sees her and he understands her curiosity. In fact, he takes this moment to show her a replica they made of her own head in a box, then asks if she would be interested in modeling for him. Now, she agrees. I mean, come on, didn't you learn anything from Fay Ray in the last movie? Well, later the police are interrogating Leon. It's very similar to the scene from Mystery of the Wax Museum, but this is a postcode film, so they cleaned it up a little bit. So instead of a junkie, here he's just an alcoholic. So uh, <laughs> I guess they're just trying to make it more, you know, uh, audience friendly. But the detective, uh, played by Frank Lovejoy, he's tempting Leon by putting some fresh, delicious booze on the counter to try to get him to confess to the crimes. And they do finally break him and he reveals all, but dear viewer, once he tells all, will they be too late? Well, as we near the end of the film, Sue shows up at the museum to meet with Scott, her boyfriend, but he's not there because he's working at the museum, but he got sent off to go and get some flowers, I think. She goes creeping around this museum at night and it's dark and it's eerie and the music that plays is really great atmospheric stuff. And she meets with Professor Jared there. And well, here comes the big reveal and you guys know the deal. I don't give spoilers. You need to see the end of the film for yourself. What is the mystery of the wax museum? Where do all the lifelike statues come from? Well, you probably know, but if you've never seen the film, Go and check it out for yourself. And some quick closing thoughts. You know, it was interesting in researching this film that this was Warner Brothers' first 3D movie. It was directed by Andre Daytoth, who was actually blind in one eye. So even though it was a 3D movie, he could never really see the effects. Really interesting. I mentioned Vincent Price. He's amazing here. I love watching his old films. And according to TCM, he did many of his own stunts here too, which is pretty cool. The makeup he wore, I guess, took hours to put on and it's pretty grisly. Oops, did I give part of a spoiler? Well, you probably figured it out by now anyway, but he's great here. And, you know, just generally speaking, I really liked how the film is a very faithful retelling of the first film. Often scene for scene and just dialogue all the same. The only really difference I noticed is they removed the kind of the subplot of the reporter and the news press and how they were kind of a big part of investigating the wax museum in the first film. Instead, it's the city detectives that really lead the investigation. And there are a number of different scenes that were added in, but wow, it really did feel much like the original, which was really cool as Mystery of the Wax Museum is still fresh in my brain from having just watched it recently. So <laughs> I love seeing the parallels between the two. Phyllis Kirk was great in this film and she went on to play Nora Charles in the TV series version of The Thin Man in the 1950s. She's also in the movie Crime Wave with Sterling Hayden. That's on my list of films to check out. Daytoth also directed that one as well. And Seems like this would really be fun, and I'm just being waxing nostalgic here, but it would be a hoot to get to see this film in an old classic theater with the actual 3D effects. But, you know, and to be honest, watching the film, the 3D scenes, you know, they weren't that overt that if you see it in 2D, it's disappointing. I know sometimes you watch a 3D film and it's like, well, yeah, I'm really missing out on something here. But... You know, there's only a couple scenes in the film, like the paddleboard guy and the dancing girls. I guess that was designed specifically for 3D, but you can still enjoy the film just fine in 2D. But still, someday, it'd be kind of fun to don the old 3D glasses and check this out in an old-style theater. So, who knows? Who knows? 
Well, anyhow, The Wax Museum was an entertaining film from 1953, and it's worth checking out. And a side note, I can't see big vats of bubbling wax without wondering. You know, I wonder, do they smell like those old Moldorama machines? Do you remember those? You know, like the ones you'd find at SeaWorld back in the 1980s, where you could get like a little mold like a dolphin. Yeah, I've still got that smell like permanently etched into my brain. <laughs> and I've watched this film and I can't help but wonder, I bet it smelled like that in Vincent Price's laboratory. Well, okay, that's, I'll stop. The Wax Museum from 1953. It's a great film. It's creepy. It's a good mystery. Vincent Price is awesome. It's a great film worth checking out.